Hi, this is Azinit for today, and here are some of the latest for you with me, Vanessa. IMF representative met with Timor's president to discuss IMF support to Timor Leste. The objective of the meeting with the Timorese president was to discuss the IMF's support to Timor-Leste in coming year as Timor-Leste will face challenges with the new government established after the election, said Pablo Lopez Murphy, the IMF representative, after met with José Ramos Horta, the Timorese president. I came here to Timor-Leste um, from the International Monetary Fund in Washington, D.C. Uh, as you all know, there is an election date announced uh, for May 21st. So. In International Monetary Fund, uh, we have been engaging with the Timor-Leste government uh, on a sustained basis, like with all member countries. And we met the president to discuss with him what is the best way in which the IMF could support uh, Timor-Leste in uh, coming years with all the, the challenges uh, that Timor-Leste has. So that was the main purpose of the, of the meeting. Murphy said the International Monetary Fund provides technical assistance to support the government and he also encourages to examining the advice in its report published last September. In general, the International Monetary Fund provides a lot of support with technical assistance. Uh, we work very closely with the Ministry of Finance in areas of uh, public financial management, tax administration, statistics, uh, tax policy, uh, we provide technical advice on, on those issues. Uh, so, you know, those are areas of cooperation that we have with the government. But we also, we also uh, provide macroeconomic advice. And our macroeconomic advice is published every year in, 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 in a process that is called the Article 4 consultation that we do uh, with all member countries, including Timor-Leste. And I encourage you to take a look to the staff report, to the, doc, to the report that we published last year in September 2022 with our, with our uh, uh, policy advice. So, th th you know, uh, our policy advice is in the public. Uh, we have been basically insisting on the need to try to put the economy on a more sustainable footing, uh, you know, as you, as you all know, the petroleum fund, uh, the, the, the production of oil in the, Bayun, uh, in the active oil fields is, is, came to an end, so there is a need to use the money in the petroleum fund wisely. So that's in a nutshell what we recommend in, in our report. I mean, we, we will continue our conversations with the government as we always do uh, with the president. We, we, uh, we came here to, to offer our, our advice, our support, and uh, we will continue the conversations, I guess, with, with, the new, uh, with the new government when there is a new government in place. Uh, so that's as we do in all countries. At the same time, Pablo also committed he will continue the discussion with the newly elected government and will only support Timor-Leste. Timor's Prime Minister visits Indonesia to discuss bilateral cooperation between the two countries. Timor's Prime Minister Tarmadan Ruak visited Indonesia for four days, where in early February 2023 he had also done an official visit to Australia. During the visit, Tarmatan Ruak met with Indonesian President Joko Widodo to discuss the bilateral relationship and cooperation between Indonesia and Timor Leste. Ruak also expresses deep personal thanks to President Jokowi and the Indonesian government for their unconditional support to Timor-Leste as it had become the ASEAN member with an observer status. While visiting Indonesia, both leaders also witnessed and signed the notes of intent such as establishment of free economic zone in border area, higher education, meteorological, climatological and geophysics, industry and support, IT training for Timor-Leste National Election Committee. During the visit, Tarmatan Ruak was accompanied by the Timorese Foreign Minister, Minister of Transport and Communication, Minister of Commerce and Industry, Minister of Higher Education and Science, and the President of the National Election Committee. When he has done visit to Indonesia, Tarmatan Ruak and his team also made courtesy visit to Singapore in order to meet with the Singaporean Prime Minister, Lee Hsien Loong. 
World Bank to continue support Timor-Leste in various areas in the future. After meeting with the Timorese President, Jose Ramazorta, Vice President of the World Bank of East Asia and Pacific, Manuela Ferro, promised that the World Bank will support Timor-Leste in various sectors, especially in education and health. Uh, e para nós, no Banco Mundial, o Timor-Leste é um dos, mais, uh, dos países mais importantes e dos nossos clientes mais importantes. Previously, Timor-Leste established cooperation with the World Bank to provide support in various areas, such as education, health and private sector investments. And based on its plan, the World Bank will continue to support Timor-Leste's future development process. Timorese President Zera Mazorta and Prague International discusses about human development issue and poverty reduction in Timor-Leste. The opinion expressed by the Executive Director of Prague International, Shamiran Abed, after meeting with the President of Timor-Leste, Jose Ramazorta. Shamira Abed said, Brac ready to support the programs in priorities area proposed by the President of Republic and based on the cooperation plan that have discussed in the meeting. Uh, BRAC is an organization from Bangladesh which has been working on development for 50 years and at BRAC International we take a lot of our learning and experience to other countries in Asia and Africa. We were very honored to be invited by His Excellency the President of the Republic to come to Timor-Leste to see some of the activities of the government and also to see if there are certain things that we can do in ways that we can support the government uh, in their priorities, especially the development priorities. So we're just here to learn uh, and we're trying to understand if there is a role that we can play to support that. But from our point of view, we're just here on his invitation and we're just here to learn more about the country and understand the development priorities of Timor-Leste. I wouldn't say there are any specific priorities for us, but we would really be uh, informed and um, we would basically base our work on the priorities of the government. So we were very grateful to His Excellency for the time he gave us this morning where he laid out what his priorities are. And a lot of the priorities that he laid out that are important here are issues that we have worked on for many years. In human development, education, health, he talked about child malnutrition, maternal mortality, reducing maternal mortality, uh, he talked about better quality of education at the pre-primary level and the primary level and going upwards. So uh, he talked about a whole uh, gamut of issues that are on his mind. These are all areas that we have worked in. So, Abit added, based on the recommendation by Jose Ramazorta, the Prague International Organization will also invest in priorities areas such as education and health. Nowadays, Prague International Organization continue to carry out data collection for priorities areas during a week visit in Timor-Leste before providing support and allowed to target the Prague International that has prepared. The Timorese president declared 21st of May 2023 as the parliamentary election date. On February 13, 2023, Timor-Leste's President Jose Ramazorta declared the May 21, 2023 is the parliamentary election date, and Horta also added the parliamentary election must be scheduled before 80 days prior to the day of election. Uma responsabilidade muito importante atribuída ao presidente. A very important task for a president to assign the election date through a decree, the date of the election for the election of the national parliament member, with the minimum days earlier is 80 days. Based on that, it is decided that the date of May 21st, 2023, is to hold the election for member of the national parliament. dos deputados ao parlamento nacional. As of the Article 13 of the RDTL Constitution concerning the election and the composition for the Parliament, in the third line road, the law will regulate the rules in the parliamentary elections, and in the fourth line road, the term of the office for the legislatures is five years only. Therefore, the President uses its competence to announce the schedule of the parliamentary election. Indonesia court sentences former police officer to death for assassination plot. An Indonesian court on Monday sentenced a former police general to death for orchestrating the murder of his bodyguard in a case that has gripped the Southeast Asian country for months. 
Ferdi Sambo, a former Inspector General and Head of Internal Affairs with the National Police, whose trial began on October 2022, appeared before a panel of three judges at a court in Jakarta. Prosecutors had called for a life sentence. Sambo's lawyer, Arman Hanis, told reporters his legal team will study the ruling but declined to say whether it will appeal. The spectators in the courtroom reacted to the verdict with cheers and gaps while Sambo consulted with his legal team. The trial has raised concerns over impunity at the top of Indonesia's police force. Police had initially said the bodyguard, 27-year-old Brigadier Nopriansa Yushua Hultabarat, was killed in a shout-out with another officer at Sambos Jakarta resident last year. Mother of murdered bodyguard Nopriansa Yushua Hultabarat, Rosti Simanjuntak, said she thanks God for every miracle and everything came true. <laughs> During the trial, Sambo had said the killing was not planned and attributed it to his anger because he believed Hutabarat had raped his wife. But the judges on Monday dismissed the claim due to the lack of evidence. Kamarudin Simanjuntak, a lawyer representing the victim's family, told reporters he believed Sambo deserved the death penalty, while Hutabarat's mother, Rosti Simanjuntak, stood close by, clutching her son's photograph. China and Cambodia leaders discuss the security and investment issues. The state television reported Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen met with Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing and discussed issues ranging from security to investment. CCTV said she expressed China's unwavering support for Cambodia's sovereignty and security and urged increased investment from Chinese enterprises in the country, and Hun Sen received multiple assurances from the Chinese president for economic and political support. In response, Hun Sen conveyed his gratitude for China's COVID-19 vaccine, and the two leaders reached an agreement to build more green energy projects. Cambodia, which is among Asia's poorest country, has been an important ally to China in recent years and has been accused of giving it de facto veto power in the Association of Southeast Asian Nations' consensus-based decision-making process in return for economic support. Cambodia has rejected and insisted its foreign policy is not under China's influence. Indonesia sends quake aid rescue staff to Turkey to help earthquake victims. Indonesian search and rescue teams took off for Turkey to assist with the international aid efforts following a massive earthquake that has killed more than 28,000. Two military aircraft with more than 50 staff, 24 tons of aid, were dispatched from a military base of Halim Pranakusuma. The earthquake, which struck in the early hours of Monday, February 6, 2023, ranks as the seventh most deadly natural disaster this century, ahead of Japan's 2011 tremor and tsunami, and approaching the 31,000 killed by a quake in neighboring Iran in 2003. The combined death toll from the deadliest quake in the region in two decades that struck southern Turkey and Syria stood at near 30,000. Indonesian Muslims pray for victims of death at Turkey and Syria quake. Indonesian Muslims gathered at Jakarta's Istiklal Mosque to pray for the victims of the deadly quake that struck Turkey and Syria early this month. Some expressed their condolences and urged the government to send help as soon as possible. Indonesia also sent food and medical aid, as well as a search and rescue team to Turkey. A national police unit and a humanitarian group of volunteers and medics will join the national efforts to assist Turkey. The death toll from the 7.8 magnitude earthquake and several powerful aftershocks across both Turkey and Syria has surpassed more than 23,000. The casualties have exceeded the more than 17,000 killed in 1999 when a similarly powerful earthquake hit northwest Turkey. The key to Cambodia's development is peace, politics, stability. Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia, Hun Sen, in an exclusive interview with the China Media Group said maintaining peace and political stability is the most critical factor for Cambodia's development path which provides foundation for economic growth and improvement in people's living standards. <laughs>
còn lưu thông. For us, the key to Cambodia's development lies in maintaining peace and political stability. This is crucial, as without peace and political stability, there is no hope for development. And all that lies ahead is a fragmentation which does more harm than good. Our country has just emerged from a long history of conflicts as we ended 500 years of division by establishing a unified nation. Over the past 24 years, our country has not fallen into division and our economy has grown rapidly. I have two key principles of governance. First, maintaining political stability. And second, pursuing sound macroeconomic development. The two elements are interdependent. If you look at Middle Eastern countries, such as Syria, Libya, and Iraq, are they able to maintain stability? When they were divided, invaded, or attacked, they lost stability, and thus the ability to develop. So you ask what is the most critical factor for Cambodia's development path? It is peace and political stability. <laughs> Cambodia has enjoyed nearly a quarter of a century's peace and stability after the end of the civil war in 1998, after current Prime Minister Hun Sen used his self-designing win-win policy to encourage the Khmer Rouge to reintegrate into his Phnom Penh government. Since the Southeast Asian nation embarked on a journey of rapid economic growth, a huge society transformation. For more than two decades, Cambodia has achieved an averagely economic growth of about 7% per annum in pre-pandemic era, reaching the lower middle income status in 2015. According to the outlook released by Cambodia's central bank in mid-January, the country's economy is projected to grow around 6% in 2023, up from 5.1% in 2022, driven by government exports, tourism, agriculture, and construction and real estate. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. Enjoy your weekend with your loved ones. Stay safe and stay healthy.